Live from your breaking news leader, Fox 16 Good Day Arkansas starts now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on Good Day. I'm Ashley King. And I am Pat Walker. Coming up, a mother in Little Rock says a gang shot at her son. What she thinks may have been the motive. Plus, there's some concern over how Little Rock's tornado warning sirens are activated. Why there was a 15-minute delay in getting them on. And a toddler loses his eye after being shot with a flare gun. Why police say they're still trying to figure out what really happened. Wow. All right, so uh, I had some rain this morning yeah. when I was driving in. Saw some lightning out there. Yeah. A little bit of that out there this morning, yep. unfortunately. Moving its way out, though, so we'll actually be calmer by the afternoon hours, but start of the day, certainly on the soggy side, so grab an umbrella as you head out mm -hmm. the door. Certainly take your time on the roads. Here's a look at live pinpoint radar. We do have showers stretched across the state this morning. A band of rain stretching from north central Arkansas, now pushing through the metro and pushing northeast, but through Little Rock, starting to lighten up just a bit. Got some light showers stretching through portions of Pulaski County, Jacksonville, down to southern Pulaski County, a little bit further off to the north. You can see through Van Buren County, Cleburne County, starting to see some rain approach you, Mount Vernon. A little bit of lightning associated with this as well, although this activity calming down just a bit. Carlisle getting that precipitation and then further to the south. Pine Bluff starting to see some rain with heavier rain now moving its way into Sheridan. Temperatures across the area, they're in the 40s, 50s to the south and the west, but we'll actually be seeing temperatures in the 60s today, as well as a quieter afternoon. But tomorrow, we're monitoring the risk for severe storms. Severe weather outlook for tomorrow has a slight risk for severe storms for central and portions of eastern and southern Arkansas. I'm going to have a look at that forecast. It's coming up in just a bit. Break down that severe weather concern coming up. Thank you very much. 7.02 is the time right now. It's time to check your traffic. Brought to you by the Crane Team. And here's our traffic camera in Jacksonville. Volume along 67 southbound. Uh, looks to be pretty decent. It is moving along fine there along Main Street. But just a little farther to the north there from Main Street. Really from James Street northward. We have slow traffic through Jacksonville. Backing up all the way. Slow traffic all the way to Cabot this morning. So we are seeing some slow traffic. There may be an accident in Jacksonville. Look for that report. Traffic also 67 southbounds backing up McCain Boulevard as traffic trying to get down to around I-30 and come into Little Rock. However, this is maybe also due to rainfall. Typically, we slow down. That makes all traffic slower, which is fine. You should slow down. Of course, sun's going to come up at 724 today. Keep your low beams on if your windshield wipers are on. That is state law. 630 eastbound slow in the construction zone. Also a little slow traffic on 430 southbound around Rodney Parham and a little slow traffic as well coming in from Saline County. All right, that's your traffic check. Let's get into the news. All right, police are investigating a shooting at an apartment in southwest Little Rock. Two people were shot at the Spring Valley Apartments near Geyer Springs Road. Police say one person was shot in the foot, but we don't know the extent of the other victim's injuries. A Little Rock mother says a gang shot at her 14-year-old son. It's just one of several shootings reported since Friday. Now, this map right here shows where several homes and cars have been shot up in the last few days. Talitha Humphrey says a gang shot at her son on West 24th Street on Friday. She says it's because they don't like who he hangs out with. Police couldn't confirm what happened, but we do know a bullet did hit a home in the area around the same time. Every day is a struggle. Every day he's a threat. Every time he walk out my door and leave, I worry about my son. Officers found her son hiding out in a shed shortly after the shooting. He was not hurt. The National Weather Service confirmed all three tornadoes that hit Arkansas over the weekend were rated EF1s. The tornadoes touched down in the areas of Toltec, Humminoke, and Slovak. A viewer sent us this video from one in Lone Oak County. The tornadoes destroyed several homes and injured two. Here in Little Rock, we're learning there was a 15-minute delay in activating the city's tornado warning sirens. Now the city's emergency communications is promising to do better. It's a four-step process to sound the sirens, starting with the warning that comes through a specialized phone. We're told the call came through, but the other steps were not followed. It becomes a very busy place, and in that hectic, busy environment we had going, we missed a few things we shouldn't have. 
The Little Rock Police Department says the alert from the National Weather Service came in at about 9.55 Saturday morning. Their warning went out at about 10.10. Meanwhile, people whose homes were destroyed on Scruggs Road in South Pulaski County are pushing for a tornado siren closer to where they live. Some neighbors tell us this was the third tornado they've survived and that the closest warning siren is about five miles away. We also have an update after some pets went missing during the tornadoes. On Sunday, we reported two dogs and two cats were missing on Scruggs Road. A stranger found the dogs while searching through debris. Since then, one of the two missing cats has been found, and they hope to find the other cats soon. A toddler in East Arkansas lost an eye after being shot with a flare gun. Helena West Helena police say Eddie Hawks, Hawkins Jr. was playing with the flare gun when it happened, but his family says it was a 15-year-old cousin who pulled the trigger. Why would you f shoot the flare gun in the first place? Why would you have a flare gun inside the house? They don't make sense. Like flare gun is for emergencies. The toddler will likely be in the hospital for two months. He'll also have to have a glass eye. Police say they are still trying to get to the truth about what actually happened because they were given conflicting statements. We're told charges will likely be filed. Happening today, Governor Hutchinson will sign his $300 million highway funding package. Isabella Moeller joins us this morning to break down the numbers. And Isabella, how soon will this money be available? So it's something that we've talked about for what seems like months, and it all comes down to today where Governor Hutchinson will sign this highway funding bill to law. Immediately, $95 million will be available, but there's another $200 million that's expected, and that comes down to our Kansans extending the sales tax next year. The highway bill allows the Department of Transportation to get working on roads across the state. The director of RDOT says each county has roads that will be fixed because they all have improvements to be made. Some of the long-term goals include fixing weight-restricted bridges, especially for agricultural purposes, but short-term, fixing those potholes that many see and actually unfortunately hit every day. There is a second component to this. It's the increase in fuel tax, three cents a gallon, and then six cents for diesel plus. There's at least 35 million expected in casino money that will help fix roads as well. Right now, no word on when we'll see the gas increase, but it does. It ultimately comes down to the voters in 2020. If our Kansans don't extend that sales tax, then the director of the Department of Transportation says there is some leeway. The current tax doesn't expire until 2023, and then there would be a couple of legislative sessions to figure it out. Back to you. Right, thanks, Isabella. The Arkansas Senate has approved a measure banning most abortions 18 weeks into woman, a woman's pregnancy. The House-backed measure was amended last week to add exemptions for rape and incest. The approval moves Arkansas closer to having one of the strictest bans on abortions in the country. The Arkansas Senate has approved expanding the secrecy surrounding the state's lethal injection drug supply. It prevents the state from releasing information that would directly or indirectly identify the supplier and manufacturer of its execution drugs. Death penalty opponents have complained that the proposal will give officials broad powers to withhold information about the execution process. All right, 708 now, and guess what today is? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, but it's also National Pancake Day. Ah. Yeah, so coming up, we'll tell you how you can get some free pancakes and help out a good cause. Plus, your snooze button may be doing more harm than good. Why the experts mm. say you're better off getting up the first time your alarm mm. goes mm, off. Mm, mm, mm. No, no, no. Natalie has your forecast <laughs> as well when we come back here on Good Day Arkansas. You're watching Fox 16 Good Day Arkansas with Ashley King. Pat Walker and meteorologist Natalie Walters. This is Fox 16 Good Day Arkansas.